for Jesus, a wonderful round of applause. My beloved brethren, we are going to have a truly wonderful meeting today, and I would like to invite all of you anywhere in the world that you are to join us and continue watching. Today, God will act and will do mighty works, and I am absolutely sure that the Lord God will bless you all. Amen? Now, I'm still talking about this great message, this important message, based on the word of our Lord, our dear God. And this passage is truly powerful. Now let's start to analyze the word of God. I've been talking about the book of Hebrews in chapter 10, and there are still some things I'd like to discuss here. In Hebrews chapter 10, this is what we've been discussing. And we will start with verse number 11. There are revelations here. I'll just start reading this so we don't waste too much time because I've spent time on this already this week. Because today God has great things to work within us in our understanding. Let's read what the author of the book of Hebrews wrote. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. My brethren, this is very important. If one offers the same sacrifice that didn't take sins away in the past, they won't work in the future. When one says the same prayer that didn't heal in the past, it won't heal in the future. God shouldn't get tired because you keep asking him repeatedly, Oh, really? Mmm, that Araujo is a real something, huh? I will heal him so that he stops asking for things. It's not like that. When you do anything that is not biblical, it won't work. Brethren, if you pray without true faith, then you can say the prayer again, but with faith. And you should only pray to God when that faith is present, when you feel that certainty within your heart. When you go out to battle in the name of Jesus, determined to have your rights observed. At that moment when this happens, you can firmly take up your position in Jesus and at that moment, brethren, you can be absolutely sure that the power of God will truly act. Then the priests of Judaism offered each and every day and many times over and over the same sacrifices, but the sins wouldn't go away. The offerings weren't doing any good. Sacrifices don't take away sins. There is only one sacrifice that does this, which would be from Jesus. Shall we continue to read the Bible? But this man, in the case Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, and Jesus took away all sins, all you have to do is believe, forever sat down at the right hand of God. That is, at the right hand of the Father, he commands all the power of God, and God made us sit together with him, as it's written in the Bible in Ephesians 2, 6. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. Now this is the work carried out by the church. You and I must fight forever the forces that come against us. We shouldn't hide from them and wait for them to go away. We should confront them, overcome, and make these forces the footstool of Jesus Christ until the very last enemy is finally dominated. When the last enemy is overcome and defeated, finally it will be impossible for the enemy to rise up against you and the power of God will come into action and you shall be successful forever in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now the next verse is what really interests me. From that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. But brethren, why? What's the purpose of this? For by one offering, that is the sacrifice that Jesus offered, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. This is what I've been talking about. And this is actually the seventh meeting when I address this subject. Brethren, we were made perfect. God has perfected us when we were sanctified. We hear the gospel being preached, we accept Jesus, and our life changes completely. We are sanctified. At that exact moment, we are made perfect by God. But I am not. No one is actually perfect yet in here. No one assumed that, but it's just like the land of promise. So we have Canaan here, and the children of Israel were walking towards Canaan, and the Lord God said, I have given you this land. 
it belongs to you. But they would have to get there first. First, we have to get to the blessing we need and then fight and take possession of that land. Only then would they have the possession. The land was theirs already. God had given it to them. God said, I give you all the land of Canaan. The land is yours. The promise of perfection is for us. It's been given already. God gave it to us, but we need to walk in faith and take possession of everything that belongs to us. And this is what we've been talking about, and this is where God will bless you, and these blessings will be great. Amen? And now let's move on to the book of Colossians. In chapter 4, we have here this word from Paul the Apostle that brings us many important messages. Let's read what it says here. Epaphras, who is one of you, a bondservant of Christ, greets you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Brethren, Paul here is giving an explanation. He's telling us that we may stand perfect and complete. Epaphras, who is one of you, a bondservant of Christ, greets you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Epaphras thought that the Colossians were going through temptations, and therefore it meant that they needed to be prayed for. I must understand this. You must understand this. In our daily lives, we are being attacked by the enemy in the most diverse ways. Sometimes by the negative news about violence that they show on television every day, about crimes, things we hear and think, but wait, is it a human being who actually did that? How is that even possible? Or perhaps there is this race of beasts that's scattered throughout mankind and that is destroying all of us people. And sometimes the things we hear and see frighten us. We feel kind of displaced. But remember, we must stand perfect and complete. Right? Perfect and complete. And let's see what else it says here. In all the will of God. Therefore, we must pray and not accept that. When the Bible says that God awakens us morning by morning, and this is true, for we wake up naturally or with the aid of some device or a person, but God awakens our spirit so that we are able to receive the knowledge about what we must do. The Bible says that the Lord's mercies are new every morning. My God, I've been too distressed lately, and I've been careless about my position in Christ Jesus, for I am perfect and I am complete, but I haven't been living according to the word. And Lord, sometimes I agree with the people who are also preaching violence to put an end to violence. Sometimes I allow myself to be carried away by evil thoughts. And today, my Lord, I want to be completely transformed and made new. I'll pray every morning. I stumbled until yesterday, but as of today, I don't want to stumble anymore. I want to stand up. I want to be strengthened. I want to be your true warrior in the battlefield, Lord. Therefore, this must be the prayer that I say at all times. That's what Epaphras did for himself, and it always worked for him. He saw Paul do that, and it worked. And it'll work for all those who do the same. Because he had won the Colossians for the Lord God, now he was doing this. He was praying and fighting so that they could also stand perfect and complete and absolute in all the will of God. And what's the will of God for my life, Dr. Suarez? Can you tell me? There's a verse that addresses this. The third epistle of John, verse number two. What is it that God wants for you, whom he made complete and, and perfect and also absolute? Third epistle of John, verse number two. It's a very small epistle. And this is what he says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. God wants you to prosper in everything, in any segment of your life, at your workplace, in your matrimony, in your friendship towards others, when you walk down the streets, and when you leave home and go to work and then you come home safely. So God wants you to prosper in all things and be in health. God is making a covenant. 
But why won't God heal me instead of making a covenant? As a matter of fact, God has healed you. If we were simply much more dedicated to the Word of God and to praying, we would be closer to God. It's kind of like a preacher. Sometimes a preacher does a thousand things and he doesn't have enough time to do everything. He doesn't have the time to read the Word every day and to pray. When the Christian church began to exist in Jerusalem, Peter one day stopped and said, but this is all wrong. In those old days when people got converted, the Jews would put the people out of their communities. They didn't have any jobs, they didn't have a house to live in, and they didn't have any food to eat. And we must eat many times a day. And what did the church do then? The church would pick up these people and give them food. And in the middle of this procedure, when the church was not forced to carry it out, but it was part of our God's love, there was a complaint. The widows of the Hellenists were being neglected in relation to the widows of the Hebrews and so forth and so on. And Peter the Apostle said, this is what we're going to do. Let's put an end to this. We the Apostles will no longer deal with this matter. Let's seek out seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, full of divine grace, and they shall serve the tables. We, the apostles, will give ourselves to the word of God, to meditation, and to praying, so that when we are ministering the word of God, we don't talk about wheat, about bananas, about these things. We shall only talk about God's promises. If a person only devotes time to electronic games when the meeting is over, they're like, doo, 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 doo. when they come to church, they're just like, they daydream. It's the same thing for those who dedicate themselves to things that are even worse. They don't have anything to give. And you, for instance, you have your job, you have your struggles and your daily problems. What should you do then? You have to pray. You have to seek God. My Lord God, I need to, I need to do as Epaphras did, my Lord. And what did Epaphras do here? He would beg, he would labor, he would labor in prayers always. And why is that? that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Now, the will of God, which I was talking about, is that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. The soul must prosper first. We understand that we can only become something when we are in Christ Jesus. He has perfected us. But if we don't observe his word, we are just perfect and imperfect at the same time. We have the title in our hands, but not the property. And what is it that we should do then? We should begin climbing the ladder of perfection. Every step, every battle we overcome, that's something we conquer and subdue, and we shall not go back. We have to pray, brethren. And whenever any problem arises, we have the skills to handle it. And what's the limit? The stature of Christ, that is all of the perfect knowledge our Lord Jesus had. Jesus was a perfect man. Jesus made us perfect, and now it's up to us. Are we going to achieve perfection? I don't know about that. I still don't know anyone who has achieved that, except for the Lord Jesus, but it's a challenge for us. God told Israel, I'm giving you this land. He gave them the land as an everlasting possession. And now where am I taking you to? Well, now you have to take possession of the land. I won't go there and just and put everybody out so you can dwell there. You should enter the land and take it, for I am giving you the land. It's the same with his promises. You will not just lay there in a hammock and just wait for the moment when you intercede and paralytics are healed, blind people can see, there's plenty of prosperity. I'm afraid I don't understand. Yes, you do. Do what you have to do. Epaphras would labor, but why? Because he did it and it worked for him. If it didn't work for him, it wouldn't work for the Colossians. He wouldn't have wasted his time then. But because he had climbed those stairs, Epaphras was fully prepared to get there and fulfill God's will. And this is exactly what our Lord God is telling us today. And there's more. There's another word that I would like to discuss with you today. Let's go back to the book of Hebrews. We discussed Hebrews earlier today. Let's go to chapter 5. Let's see what the holy writer is trying to explain to us here. Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 14. Shall we read it now? But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use 
have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, what should we do with solid food? In the previous verse, the author talks about milk. Children need milk, but adults don't. Adults are grown-ups. They have different needs. They need solid foods, which are good for them. It's the same thing for us. Keep listening to the same things over and over again. You know that Jesus forgives and heals and saves is great. But whoever is already walking towards perfection, fighting for it, needs something greater so that they could take possession of what belongs to them so that they can have spiritual strength to confront the evil powers of darkness that overwhelm them and that are destroying their health, their peace, their communion at home, and to overcome these evil powers. Therefore, we need to come to God. Lord, please make me understand the word. And when that profound revelation comes, you should say, I will follow that revelation. I will fight. I will be successful. And that element will surely bring you the strength that you need to assume your position in Christ because what Jesus has done for us already, taking away our sins, taking away our illnesses, he won't do that again. Now it's up to us to fight against evil. So I will learn whatever belongs to me. And there comes a time, brethren, that unless you learn it, it simply won't work. There's this testimony I included in the book I wrote, How to Take Possession of the Blessing, about having for two years and four months this hay fever, and I just couldn't seem to get better. It lasted from August 1982 to December 2nd, 1984. I prayed, I asked, I begged, I cried, my Lord, what did I do wrong? It seemed that God was wrong, not me. And God wouldn't give me an answer, not in any way. One day I wanted to catch God in the act, as they say. I said, Lord, as I was praying, you know, let's play a role-playing game. Let's suppose, just for the purpose of this game here, let's suppose that I'm God, and suppose that you are Dr. Suarez. You've had this hay fever for nearly two years now, and you pray and pray and it hasn't healed. Now, Lord, if I were God and you prayed, I would heal you. Why won't you heal me? And God didn't bother to answer me, but I was completely foolish. God is never wrong, brethren. God is completely immaculate. Things are immediate with the Lord God. So now we spend our whole lives and go to the church once in a while, get blessed, get say some prayers, and then we go home and think I'm perfectly fine. You're not fine. You have to read the Bible. You have to learn what it is that God wants. You have to have a communion with the Lord God so that you can have knowledge and understanding. It's not the same as going to a butcher and saying, give me a pound of beef, here's the money, here it is and you don't have a clue of how those cattle were raised, where the cattle came from, how the beef is produced, you just buy it and that's it. No, with God, you are the agent who will put the power of God into action. In Psalm 103, verse 20, uh, David, who wrote this psalm, understood this and he wrote something that is absolutely important for everyone. Let's read what he wrote. Bless the Lord. It's Psalm 103, verse number 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels, that is all the angels, who excel in strength, they all excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Whenever you give voice to the word of God, these angels who excel in strength begin to act, blessing the Lord for the glory of the Lord, and they do whatever is necessary. Do you need a kind of healing? Don't keep waiting for something magical to happen. I decide to meet my God. I will get to meet the one whom the preachers say, he healed them and people say he healed them, so why won't he heal me? And you can be absolutely sure that you will meet him. God will never hide away from you, quite the contrary. God has been looking for true, wor uh, true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. People who actually observe God's commandments and achieve deliverance. These are the people God is looking for and not the ones who keep saying, Lord, thank you, you're great, and won't receive anything from the Lord. We must prove and confirm that the Lord God is actually great. This is God's word for you. If you follow it, then God will bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now let's go back to Hebrews 5, verse 14, where we discussed earlier. Let's get back to it and conclude so we can pray afterwards. Hebrews 5, verse 14. 
But solid food belongs, and this solid food is necessary to those who are of full age. And that's it. I need solid food. I don't want simple, plain things, you know. I want God to analyze my life. I want God to show me what it is that I'm doing wrong, and I will work on that. I don't want anything that separates me from the Lord God, anything that weakens me. I want God working in me, and you will achieve this in the name of Jesus. And now let's watch the real life drama segment for today. I, I followed a different religion. I was involved in idolatry. I was involved with someone who served spirits. My perspectives were very close and limited in her, and my life was just getting worse and worse. You know, I had debts, I had an accident, my family was affected also, my father was a heavy drinker. I had debts the amount of my yearly earnings, you know. It was a very hard time in my life. I remember many times I got down on my knees and asked, Lord, is this what you want for me? I started going to the church with my mom, looking for support for my father used to drink. And as of the day I got baptized, I never left the church again. I met my husband at one of the meetings. There was no connection at first, you know. But then, after a while, um, my relationship got worse and worse. And as time went by, he started to open up to me and started to talk about the relationship he had and that it wasn't going well. Then I realized that the relationship wasn't doing me any good, so I decided to break up with her. Free from the relationship that affected him so negatively, soon after, Edso and Liliani become intimate and start a relationship. We went out on a date on the weekend, and I brought her home. And at one point she said, well, the thing is, I'm going to church. If you want to go with me, you're welcome to and join me. And I said, me. I'm coming with you then. And that's when my life actually began to change. That day, I actually said to her, it was like the pastor knew my entire life, you know, because it was like the sermon was directed towards me. I noticed that God affected him in his life, you know. At that moment, I chose God. I started to give offerings, and I was able to pay off all my debts and I was able to do so in only one year. And as I honored God, he honored me back, so I decided to get baptized. The day I was baptized, it was the last time my father drank. And he got saved also. He accepted God as well. On the day we celebrated one year together, we decided to buy a, a house. The first month that I gave tithe, I found um, the property. Um, I made a deal with a construction firm, and that's the house where we live today. When the house was ready, we bought the necessary furniture, and we got married in December 2012. And I became a sponsor when I came to the Grace of God Church in Sao Paulo. And this is what I felt in my heart. I said, this is what's missing in my life. And I believe that everything that, that encourages, you know, this this initiative to spread the word of God, you know. I think it's worth it and it has to be done and we have to embrace it for sure, you know. The calling to become a sponsor appeared in my life, you know, at a, at, at a, at a time when I was young and had just started to, to work, you know. And I just couldn't, I couldn't figure out what I should do for a, for a living. Later there was this opportunity to work at the same place I work at until today. And I can only give thanks to the Lord for everything he's done. Many blessings. My, my father got converted because of my husband's testimony. Today my father goes to church together with my mother. I'm fulfilled. I'm married. I have my own house. I have a ministry. I have, as I like to put it, my children who are always with me. Without Jesus, it's just impossible. Absolutely. I made the right choice. That's absolutely beautiful, right, brethren? Praise the Lord. Edson, that was beautiful. Let's go to the question and answer segment of the show. Doctor, is everything that is in the Bible holy? There's no doubt that everything is God's inspiration, but there are accounts in the Bible as well. You cannot open the Bible and just say then, I'll do anything that God says now. Hmm. 
Someone decided to do this one day, and look what God did to this person. When he put his finger on the Bible, it said Judas departed and hanged himself. He hanged himself. He didn't know what to say. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> so you have to analyze the context, right? So that you can understand what God is talking about. Clearly, this is not the right way to behave. Question number two, please. Dr. Suarez, in a marriage, is love a feeling or a decision? Well, I don't know anything about that. I'm completely old, old-fashioned. I've been married for 40 years. I don't know anything different now. <laughs> you see, love is something great. And when you realize that it's just great when you know that that person is right for you, and of course, if that person does things that are no good, stay away from them. Avoid them at all costs. Stay away because people reveal themselves. They show if they have hate in their heart or iniquity, or maybe they think differently. Did you know that before I met my wife Magdalene at church, I started to talk to this girl and she said something that made me think, I'm out of this, but it took me some time, you know. She said, if someday I ever meet someone who does something wrong to me, I'll make them regret it. And I thought, my goodness, this woman is insane. Should we go out? I said, no way, we belong to God. We should pray instead. <laughs> Let's cut that out now. <laughs> she set the tone. I mean, she said how things would work out. <laughs> And I thought to myself, do I want to be a part of this? No way. Let me pray now in the name of Jesus. God, I will now intercede for those who are at home, for those who are now switching channels and just found our TV channel and said, I really need this blessing. Oh Lord, this was not perchance. You have already put an angel next to this person and they will become completely delivered. I am absolutely sure, Father, that now is the time to give blessings also to these people who are at the hospital or working or even in prison. God, please bless them all now. And I say the following, all evil forces shall disappear from this life in the name of Jesus. And amen.